Well, what we want to do right now is really the entire point of the entire evening, and that is our uh, fantastic student athletes uh, that are that are we are we're giving tribute to tonight. And this is the highlight of the evening. I guess we don't need the house lights on. You can get those down a little bit. Everyone done with their dinner, by the way. Fantastic, right? Give it up for the dinner. That was spectacular. But this is uh, why we're here, the uh, introduction to the Salute of Excellence. Every year we recognize student athletes. This is for the kids. Hold on a second. Thank you. Every year we recognize the student athletes whose performances throughout his or her career serves to lift up their respective sport to new heights and whose character exemplifies the goals of the athletic department here at the University of Arkansas. All of the honorees tonight will receive a special salute to excellence trophy as well as a framed photograph on display tonight near the podium. Now we have nine student athletes that we're paying tribute to tonight, but as we said earlier in the evening, there's 400, over 460 student athletes that we have at the University of Arkansas who give his or her blood, sweat, and tears for the Razorbacks on their field or floor of excellence. And we're lucky to have them. And that's why we're all here tonight is to pay tribute to them. Now our first salute to excellence honorees have distinguished themselves not just as Razorbacks in the field of play, but also while competing at a very high level for the Razorbacks in the classroom. These are the scholar athletes of the year. They truly exemplify what it means to be a student athlete and are nominated by their respected coaches and academic staff. And now, let's learn about the first of our two male scholar athletes of the year. Thank you. 
Presenting the Scholar Athlete of the Year trophy is Senior Associate Athletic Director and Men's Track Sport Administrator, Julie Cromer Peoples, as we recognize our first male Scholar Athlete of the Award, Christian Hemsfield. Good evening, and thank you for coming. I want to take this time given to me to share some thoughts I've had during my time at the University of Arkansas and also recognize some of those who have helped me along the way. It's common to hear people say they just don't have the time. I find this curious because, all, in fact, all we have is time. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us, wrote J.R.R. Tolkien in his book, The Fellowship of the Ring. I chose to spend most of my time in the classroom studying or training, trying to improve myself both mentally and physically. I honestly don't think of myself as special or having extraordinary intelligence, yet here I am. Maybe it's because I expect more out of myself than is common. Maybe it's just that I chose how to spend my time well. Whatever it is, I'm honored to win this award because there are many student athletes here at the university who are great academically, and more qualified in their athletic achievements. Of course, I could not have achieved this alone, and I have many to thank for this distinction. First, thank you to Jeff Long and the Razorback Foundation for supporting such a top-notch athletics program. I'm very gr grateful to the athletics program for all the resources and opportunities I've been given. Coming out of the cross country and track teams, I had no sense of self-entitlement. I've consistently been impressed by the amount of resources available to all the athletes at the University of Arkansas. Student athletes at the University of Arkansas are given every opportunity to succeed in, in the classroom and in their sport, in addition to traveling across the country to compete in a multitude of other benefits. We really are treated well. It still astonishes me when I hear other athletes complain about some aspect of the athletic program. Thousands of dollars are spent on each student athlete, and I think each one of us should be grateful. Thank you to Coach Bucknum, for his guidance and patience during my time here. I've had a number of setbacks during my athletic career, and I'm appreciative that he continued to give me the chance to stay on the team and prove myself. I've long believed that I have what it takes to compete at a high level, though I'd given others little reason to believe as well. Coach Bucknum and the rest of the staff continue to give me the chance to succeed. This has motivated me to do my best to contribute to the team's success over the remainder of my eligibility. Thanks also to Cole Peterson and the rest of the training medical staff for their time and effort. I've done my part to keep them busy. I may be the most expensive non-scholarship athlete this program has seen in a while. <laughs> Finally, thank you to mom and dad for all the support and love you've given me. Much of my personal philosophy is based on what I learned from my parents. I owe more to these people than I could ever repay. My mom is the most selfless person I know, and my dad is the hardest worker I know. I'm, fur I'm further grateful that my parents never pressure me to pursue athletics or a certain degree. All they ask is that I do my best and love what I do. I don't think I could have been raised any better. While this award represents what I wanted to achieve when I started school here, I still have much left to accomplish it in my studies and in my sport. I will be continuing my education next year in graduate school at the University of Arkansas and will compete on the cross country and track teams as a redshirt senior. When I finally leave here and enter the professional world, I hope to represent the University of Arkansas well. I believe what I have learned the past four years will benefit me the rest of my life and it would not have been possible without the help of so many others. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Christian, very much. And congratulations on your season, by the way. <laughs> Christian had an amazing year and is an amazing scholar athlete for the Razorbacks. And now it's time to take a look at our second male scholar athlete of the year honoree.
Once again, presenting the award is Julie Cromer Peoples as we welcome to the stage our second male scholar athlete of the year, Brooke Zellis. My speech will not be as long as uh, Christian's, but um, anyways, uh, thank you all for having me tonight. This is a great event. Um, I'm blessed to be here. It's such an honor to receive this award. Um, I want to congratulate all the other athletes for their success on and off the field this year, and um, you know, I wish them the best moving forward and in their careers as athletes. Um, you know, um, I also want to thank the Razorback Foundation for all that they do for us. Um, the the Jones Center is incredible. I, I, it's honestly the best facility that that we have, and it's it's incredible. We I can't ask for anything more, and um, very thankful for that. I want to thank my family for all that they do. I know I'm a pain most of the time, and uh, I'll, somehow they deal with me. So thank you for um, supporting me through all this. Um, I just want to, a little bit about me, um, uh, I'm going, going to be a senior next year, and um, I'm going to graduate in December, I'm studying for the MCAT right now, and I'm going to take it, take the MCAT in May, and uh, so it'll be a pretty fun semester for me, um, so that'll be exciting, and, but I, I think this fall is going to be very exciting, we have a great team coming back, and uh, it should be should be very fun. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I mean, we just ended this, this last one, but um, I'm ready to get going for the next one. So um, thank you all for all you do, and uh, go Hogs. Brooks, we look forward to you being a doctor in about 10 or 12 years after your successful NFL career. That'll be fantastic. Go Purple Dogs. Uh, now let's learn more about the first of our two outstanding female scholar athletes of the year. These are great stories. And now Associate Athletic Director in Swimming and Diving Sport Administrator Tracy Stellick is presenting the Female Scholar Athlete of the Year to our first honoree, Maddie Monroe. Congratulations. Okay. 
Uh, first off, I would like to thank the Razorback Foundation for this whole event. It's really awesome, and I'm really honored to be here. Um, I want to thank our athletic director, Jeff Long, who's just been such a tremendous leader to all of us athletes. I also want to thank our sports administrator, Tracy Stellick, who's been such a wonderful asset to our team. She even came to NCAAs last year, which is just kind of crazy that she's very committed to our team. Um, as a student athlete, I also want to thank our student athlete services staff, especially uh, the soon-to-be uh, Dr. Eric Wood. Um, Dr. Charles Smalls, Roger Hunter, um, our swimming and diving uh, athletic uh, counselor, uh, Jacob Hoops, for all their encouragement. Um, and then finally, I want to thank my parents, Tim and Sandy, who are here, uh, my grandparents, all my family and friends who have supported me when I started swimming 13 years ago because I wouldn't be who I am uh, without them. Now, the other day, somebody asked me, what it meant to be a Razorback. As I pondered the question, I really began to think about my journey here. I think too often as SEC level athletes, we take advantage of the opportunities we have as Razorbacks. Too often do as it become routine to come to practice every day, lace up our shoes, put on our gloves, grab a racket, or put on that cap logoed with the running Razorback on it. We go to class, we eat in the new Jerry Jeans and Joan Jerry and Jean Jones Center, study in the Bogle Academic Center, work out in the Bev Lewis Center weight room. We walk around campus decked out in our provided Nike gear head to toe. We differentiate, we differentiate ourselves from non-athletes or as swim co team calls muggles by wearing cliche red Razorback backpacks that symbolize, symbolizes our prestigious status on being an athlete on campus. These are just a few of the many examples of the perks that come with being an athlete here. Now don't get me wrong, these come with a lot of commitments athletically, academically, and personally. But what it means to me is to truly embrace the Razorback every day. Now as a ra engineering major, I love math, so I'm, I calculated some numbers here. <laughs> the swim team practices 20 hours a week with our season lasting from August to March. That's eight months of training. Now there's approximately four weeks in each month, so we calculate the amount of hours of training, that's 640 hours every season. Now times that by four, and that's 2,560 hours in four years. And this doesn't include our time commitments to competition, off-season training, team meals, academics, and personal development commitments. Now everyone has a different meaning of being a Razorback, but to me, it's taking every one of these minutes as an opportunity to compete against the best athletes in the country every day while attaining my degree. Now coming in as a freshman, I might not have been the most highly touted recruit, um, and I sometimes struggled to compete, but I had a lot of potential, I was coachable, I was passionate about the sport, and I trained with heart, striving to make a difference. Along with that, I was equipped with a coach who looked beyond the surface level of each of his athletes and had a clear vision for our team. My coach, Sean, who's a, here tonight, is one of the most goal-driven people I, I know. He cares deeply about every one of his athletes and he's by far the best coach I've ever worked with. I would never have been able to achieve the things that I have without him, so I wanna thank him tonight. Being a Razorback also means representing the university with pride. During the recruiting process, the, one of the reasons why I chose Arkansas was the fact that this is the only team in the state. Everyone roots for the Hogs, and I think that's amazing. And I think all my coaches and teammates can agree that I'm incredibly passionate about the sport, and I have a strong desire to promote it. So being a Razorback means getting to interact and impact Razorback fans through coaching and community service opportunities throughout my career. Now the swim team, we, uh, kind of embraced this quote from Iggy, who is famous for being fancy, um, but she's uh, trust the struggle, and being a Razorback means through the ups and downs, the highs and lows, not only in the pool, but in the classroom, to enjoy the process, learn from your mistakes, rejoice in your successes, all while making memories that will last a lifetime. Now, as my athlete uh, opportunities begin to dwindle, dwindle, I'm grateful for everything that this athletic department has done for me, as it's prepared me far beyond what I need outside of the pool as I embark in a new life. 
I love this town, this school, this state with everything I have, and being a Razorback will be ingrained with me in my heart forever. Go Hogs. Ditto, all that, better than I could ever say it. Congratulations to Maddie. Now let's learn more about our second outstanding female scholar athlete of the year. And making the presentation is Associate Athletic Director and my good friend, Chris Pohl, as we recognize our second female scholar athlete of the year, Tenny Butler. Good evening, everyone. Um, first, I want to thank the Red Tie Committee and the Razorback Foundation for making this event possible. It's continually amazing to me how much passion goes into all of the events that are put on by our university and it's just really special to be a part of that. Um, so thank you all for being here in support of Razorback Athletics, the University of Arkansas, and all of the honorees that are here tonight. I'm really excited to get to share this award with Maddie. We're just a really small fraction of the talent and brains and drive that are present in this athletics community. And being chosen from those hundreds of talented individuals that are eligible to be up here tonight and to share this moment with you and tell their stories is something that's incredibly special to me. Um, <laughs> the list I have of names to thank is longer than I think I probably even know. The staff at the University of Arkansas that does all of the things that it's easy to take for granted to all of the donors who have provided these amazing facilities and opportunities that I have been able to take advantage of over my four years here. It's just an incredibly extensive list and I'm hesitant to try and even name them. Um, the time and energy of those that are directly and indirectly involved in the opportunities, the successes that I've had both on and off the field. Family, teammates, friends, coaches, athletic trainers, weight room staff, faculty, other various staff at the university. They've inspired my actions and definitely fostered in me a deep belief that I can. 
I can excel, I can achieve, I can do good, I can be happy, I can. And that's a really beautiful and special thought. I came to the University of Arkansas January of my senior year of high school, so almost four years ago exactly tonight. I was an incredibly naive 18-year-old, and I had no idea what to expect of the world of SEC sports. I had visited and applied to 11 other schools uh, and was nowhere near making any kind of concrete decision. Uh, the only aspect, as you heard my coach say, that I thought I was sure about was that I was no longer going to be participating in soccer. I was a senior, which is really late for soccer, for those of you who don't know, and I had already turned down a few offers that I just wasn't sure I was interested in, and it, was, it seemed too late, and it was just too frustrating to try and keep going with that. But fortunately for me, uh, the power of persuasion is strong, and despite politely, I hope, turning down a new coach's invitation to come and visit the University of Arkansas, which I frankly had no idea even existed until that point. Um, I was convinced to catch a plane to Fayetteville on a very deceptively warm and windless weekend in January, which really didn't tell me anything about the spring workouts that I was going to be enduring over the next three years. But I've forgiven all that. <laughs> Um, and that was the beginning. That visit was really special, and it was just something when I stepped onto campus, I had been on so many other visits, and I really thought to myself, wow, like, yeah, this is a place I can be for four years. This can be, this can be home. And it was far away from home, but it felt right. Um, and so when I told my mom that I was going to apply to another school, she really frustratedly asked me, well, are your application fees going to be more than your first year of college? And my dad still jokes that I finally picked the one school that they didn't come visit with me. Um, <laughs> but I've grown quickly into just the most devoted Raised Back fan and a really avid supporter of what our state's academic flagship institution stands for. Here I've learned that there's always something bigger than the individual and the individual's needs to fight for and that your team's jersey is really something to be respected and valued. Sorry. <laughs> um, being surrounded by faculty and teammates and peers and mentors that always encouraged me to pursue every opportunity that came my way made my four years here really busy, but really formative. And that often really intense balancing act between the demands of being an NCAA athlete and pursuing a successful career in a dif difficult discipline were challenging, but the support systems and the relationships that I've built while I've been here have really enabled me to achieve so far beyond my own expectations. Not every moment was pretty, <laughs> I'm sure, but it seems really now that every moment was worth it. And looking back over those four years, it's so easy to see all of these amazing experiences kind of mesh together and create this beautiful picture with highlights and shadows, and it's just an incredible thing to be a part of. Um, tonight, I want to accept this award and recognition on behalf of all of the people who have stood beside me on this four-year journey. Um, I found that senior year, especially this past semester, have, has a really intense way of making you step, take a step back and look at where you've been, where you are, and where you're going. And while looking at those points in time, it's just impossible to ignore the contributions of the people who have just really guided me tirelessly through every moment in my life and to the moment that I'm really fortunate to get to be sharing with you guys. As I said before, listing names is a super dangerous game. <laughs> you always leave someone off. But there are two names that I really can't imagine finishing this speech without mentioning. My parents, John and Victoria Butler, who are here tonight, all the way from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, thank you guys so much for <laughs> the trips you made and the hugs you gave. Thank you for being Razorback fans, whether I played 90 minutes at left defender or 90 minutes at left bench. <laughs>
Your support and encouragement has been so integral to all of my successes, and your hard work always inspires mine. I'm so grateful that you've instilled your work ethic in me and in my sister, and I always will be. I read once that luck is simply where great preparation and great opportunity coincide. Thank you so much for preparing me for the great opportunity of becoming a Razorback. To everyone else who has ever supported or cheered for the Razorbacks, please know I'm grateful. We truly do have the best fans in the nation. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't have 1,000th that much poise at that age. I don't, it's unbelievable to watch these kids. It's amazing. It makes us so proud to have them as Razorbacks. By the way, before we get to our next Spirit of the Razorback Award, I just think it, it needs to be said that in the time that we last had the Red Tie Gala, we've had the Jones Center constructed, groundbreaking, ribbon cutting, and the, and the basketball practice facility groundbreaking, ribbon cutting, both open, and that is so due to all of the kids and you guys as Razorback supporters, and you need to give yourselves a round of applause for making those two amazing buildings. And when you hear the kids, when you hear the kids come up here and talk about the Jones Center, you get to see right in front of your eyes the kind of importance it has and what a difference maker it is for the University of Arkansas student athletes. And it makes you really proud to be a Razorback. It does me. Uh, the next award that we're going to have is the Spirit of the Razorback Award. This award was actually created to honor both male and female student athletes who, through participation in intercollegiate athletics, exhibit character, leadership, a commitment to academic achievement and community service, all while embracing the unique opportunities offered through the student athlete experience. Let's learn more about our female Spirit of the Razorback Award recipient. Welcoming Summer to the stage is Senior Associate Athletic Director and Women's Golf Administrator Matt Trantham as we present the female spirit of the Razorback Award winner, Summer Rochelle. Congratulations. 
Um, thank you so much for everything. It's really an honor to be here tonight among such a great class of honorees this year. Each of us have been on a very different journey to get to this point in our lives. And we grew up in different cities. We play different sports. We have different training regimens. But the one thing that we do have in common is that each of our journeys led us here to the University of Arkansas and to being Razorback student athletes. Um, my journey started at a very young age. As long as I can remember, I've been a Razorback. Um, just growing up around the Hogs, watching football games, basketball games, I felt like that I always had the Razorback spirit in me for as long as I can remember. I was very active growing up playing soccer, basketball, and golf, and for the longest time I never really knew what I was going to play in college, but I actually broke my foot one year playing soccer, and I was the most upset that I couldn't play golf. That's when I knew that golf is really going to be my sport. Um, I knew there were going to be many sacrifices along the way, and with friends not being able to go to certain events, but I knew that the sacrifice that I made when I was younger would lead me to where I am right now. Um, once recruiting started, it was a whole different ball game, and the process was a lot much, a lot more than I ever really thought that it was going to be. But in the back of my mind, I always knew that I was going to come to Arkansas. And I remember driving up to Fayetteville when I was coming on a visit to Arkansas, and I just really hoped and prayed that when I left that afternoon that I would have been offered a scholarship. And luckily, that day I was. And that's really when all of my dreams of becoming a Razorback came true. Um, I, I actually waited almost a whole year to commit to being a Razorback. Not sure exactly why, because I knew from the moment that I received the scholarship that I was going to come here. But during that time, Shauna would send me a questionnaire, just more information about myself. And the last question was, what other schools are you interested in? And I filled in that blank with all of our rivalry schools. <laughs> now, I knew that I was coming to Arkansas, but I don't know if Shauna exactly knew that, so I just had to make her kind of sweat my decision just a little bit, but um, I'm, re I'm really thankful for um, everything that Shauna has done for me, and um, my parents have been there all along the way, but they never pushed me to go to one school, or um, it was just, they were always there to, to give me advice. And we actually never sat down and had a conversation about the options that I had. We were coming home from eating pizza one night, and out of nowhere, I just told him, I'm going to be a Razorback. I'm going to commit to Arkansas next week. And I did. I was in my state tournament um, up here at Fayetteville Country Club and had a meeting with Mike and Shauna. And that was really the day I became a hog and just made me realize that if you're going to be a great athlete in Arkansas, that you got to come to the U of A. That I couldn't imagine going, being an athlete from Arkansas and going to any other school. So now I'm here standing in front of you, all who love and support the Hogs just as much as I do. This, may, this university has been amazing for me. It's helped me grow as a person, as a golfer, um, helped me become a leader on and off the course. And I'm so very thankful for this opportunity. Um, I've always set, set out to make an impact and inspire others to do what they love. And this award really means a lot to me because it's not an award just about my athletic achievements. It really to me, it's more of a award about the type of person that I am and the type of person that I want to be. Um, my parents have always told me it's one thing to be a great golfer, but it's more imp important to be a great person. And so that's what all of this really means to me. I'd like to say thank you to the best ath athletic director in the country, Mr. Jeff Long, um, for all of his support and leadership to everyone here at the university, to the Razorback Foundation members, 
Thank you so much for your contributions and supports. You really keep us going and um, make all of these dreams come true. To the Razorback Foundation staff for all of the events that you put on this amazing event tonight. It's something that I want to keep coming back to. Um, Dr. Charles Small and Eric Wood, y'all have really helped me become a leader off of the course and really develop into a better person. I couldn't thank you enough for everything that y'all do. To Mike and Shauna, you guys are the greatest. And I, I, can, I don't really have words to say how much you guys mean to me and the impact you've had on me both on and off the golf course. And I'm just so thankful for you two that I have y'all to push me and challenge me every day to really be the best that I can be. Um, friends that are in the audience tonight, thank you for all of your support um, through everything. It means the most to me to have y'all by my side. To my parents and my grandparent, my grandpa is here tonight. My grandpa, grandma couldn't make it, but thank you so much for your love and support and just being my rock and always being someone that I can can come to um, in any time that I need. And you all have made so many sacrifices to help me be where I am today. And like I, I can't express how much I love you guys and how much you mean to me. So thank you so much for everything, and go Hawks. Congratulations to Summer. So many great student athletes tonight. And now let's take a look at our first of the recipients for our male Spirit of the Razorback Award. It had been 20 years since our consolidated basketball had season its effective at the 2014-15 campaign, and Bobby Portis was a big reason for that. Blocked away by Portis. Portis back into the field. Bobby shot it, and then under it will let in Blair. Kicked away by Portis. He's good. He's good. Well, as you're probably aware, Bobby is off to a tremendous start his rookie season with Chicago. A little busy tonight, as I'm sure you can probably imagine. They're actually playing in Cleveland tonight, playing the Cavs, so uh, unable to attend. Now accepting the award on Bobby's behalf is Senior Associate Athletic Director and Men's Sport, uh, men's Basketball Sport Administrator, John Fagg.
I will be brief. It's really an honor to accept this on Bobby's behalf and on behalf of the entire uh, men's basketball program. I think we all know what a great player Bobby is, but he's really a much better person if you've ever been around him and a devoted Razorback. And I think he has a message for us. Thank you, John, by the way. Appreciate that. Uh, now, of course, for our second Male Spirit of the Razorback Award winner, we direct your attention also to the video screen for someone I think you're familiar with. Accepting the award on Brandon's behalf, longtime assistant coach, current director of high school relations, and most importantly, Brandon's father, Coach Bobby Allen. Thank you. Uh, Brandon's really sorry that he couldn't be here tonight. Obviously, he's out of town training, but he does have a short video that he'd like to share with you.
thank you both to Brandon and to Coach Allen as well. Uh, congratulations really to Summer, Bobby, and Brandon. They all really, I mean, the one thing, they're all incredible student athletes, but it's right here. It's the passion to be a Razorback, and that's what you gotta love. Before we recognize the male and female athletes of the year, and you can see, man, we had a lot of candidates for those awards, didn't we? We wanna take care of a couple of few uh, housekeeping items. Uh, if you won one of the silent auction items, and you're going to find out about that one way or the other, your bidder number will be displayed on the screens immediately following tonight's event. So look for your bidder number. They're going to have them up on the screen, and then if that's yours, you want to get with all the people to find out what you won and how many things you won. I got my fingers crossed. I have no idea. <laughs> I had a few things I was trying to win, so I hope I set my number up there. Now, if you opted into the express checkout, when you're registered uh, and see your bidder number on the screen, you can just proceed directly to the silent auction room and get your items because you already paid for it. Uh, they already took your money. They, you can just say thank you and pick your stuff up and you paid. So there you go. Now, if you did not sign up for the express checkout and see your bidder number on the screen, you'll need to return uh, to the registration area to pay for your items. Uh, where's Elizabeth? Because Liz is going to be in charge of that, wherever she is. She's the girl. And again, before we get to this, another round of applause for Elizabeth Sullivan, who has put this entire evening right here on the shoulders. Love my girl, Elizabeth. Every year, I don't think it can get better. Every year, it gets better. And that's because of Elizabeth. Fantastic job. And the entire team with the Razorback Foundation. And uh, what an incredible evening. Now, the final two awards of the night, two unbelievable student athletes that we are so blessed to have here at the University of Arkansas. Uh, they have really established themselves as the best that the Razorback program have to offer in their respective sports. Uh, throughout their careers, these incredible individuals rose to the top of their respective sports and have led the Razorbacks to national prominence individually for them and as teams in the process. So let's start off with the male Razorback Athlete of the Year. Welcoming Benny Baseball to the stage, my good friend, Associate Athletic Director and Baseball Sport Administrator Kevin Trainer, 
as we present your Male Athlete of the Year. And the last time I get to say it, the way I like to say it at Bomb Stadium, Andrew Benintendi. Thank you. How are we all doing tonight? Let's get another round of applause for all the athletes here tonight. Um, first off, I'd like to say thanks to the Razorback Foundation. Um, I mean, for everything they do, this event tonight, it's unbelievable. Um, just looking out here, it's a lot more people than I expected, actually. Um, no, but uh, it's unbelievable what everybody here does for us student athletes, and um, I can't thank you enough. Um, being in a situation like this, being up here in front of you guys, it gives me a, a moment to thank a few people. Um, there's a big list, but I'm just going to name a few that have impacted my life um, while I've been in Fayetteville. Um, I'd first like to thank the coaches, Dave Van Horn, uh, Tony Vitello, and Dave Jorn, um, for giving me the opportunity to come, in, come down here to Fayetteville and you know, start right as a freshman. Um, it was a big jump, and you know, I, I had some failures my, my freshman year, and uh, they stuck with me, threw me out there every day, and uh, I can't thank you enough for that. Um, I'd like to thank my teammates. Um, I've made some of the best friends I've, that are, I've made, um, you know, lifelong friends that uh, I've made these past two years, and it's truly a, it's just a, it's a blessing to get to know some of these guys. Um, and lastly, I'd like to thank uh, you guys, the fans. Um, many people ask me, why did you choose Arkansas? And um, the answer is the same every time. Um, the support that us student athletes get, it's tremendous. Um, I came down here for an official, unofficial visit uh, my junior year, I think, of, of high school. And um, the baseball team was playing South Carolina. And just the energy in the stadium, it was electric. And I knew at that point, even the first time I came down as a sophomore, I know, uh, I, I really didn't want to come down here. Coach, Coach Van Horn, I haven't told anybody this. Um, so we'll look at this one. Um, my dad did business um, in Fayetteville, so um, he was already down here. And, um, he told my mom and myself to come, come on down, check it out. He saw the field, um, and it's, it's a cool field, so come check it out. So uh, I'd been in contact with the coaches, Todd Butler, who was a recruiting guy at the time, and um, came down and watched a few Fall World Series games. And uh, at that point, I knew. Um, I didn't tell Coach Van Horn or anybody, um, but I was I remember sitting behind home plate saying, I'm going to come here and I'm going to play. And, um, I mean, from the facilities to the fans, everything's just been a tremendous ride these last two years, and um, I feel a big sense of pride saying that I'm a Razorback and I will be for life. Thank you guys again, and I hope you have a great rest of the night. I am going to miss saying that name. I'm going to miss that. I love saying it every single time. I was blessed to get up and say that in front of the mic. By the way, have you seen the pictures? of the new scoreboard at Bomb Stadium. Have you seen that? Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone in the room. You had a lot to do with that. It's unbelievable, exciting. Thanks, and congratulations to Andrew. And now, let's meet our Razorback Female Athlete of the Year.
Women's Track and Field Sport Administrator Julie Cromer Peoples is once again joining us to represent the female Athlete of the Year, Dominique Scott Cross. When I was 12 years old, a dream was born. When I was 12, my parents, sister, and I flew to the United States for the first time. We came to visit my uncle, aunt, and cousin in Raleigh, North Carolina for the Christmas holidays. While on this trip, my uncle and aunt drove my family and I to a few universities in the neighboring areas, universities like Duke and North Carolina State. During this time, I was a young girl who loved sports, but I didn't have any plans for my future. I still had six years in school. I was far from making any life decisions. But my parents knew what my future held. They believed I had a gift to run. So we drove to these universities where we looked at the school's campuses. But most importantly, my family took me to each of these universities' outdoor tracks. All of these universities had gorgeous outdoor tracks. My sister and I ran one lap around each of these 400 meter tracks pretending to be Olympians. I'd never been, I had never run track before, only cross country, but somehow my parents knew that track was in my future. I'm so grateful for my uncle and aunt and my parents, my dad who's in the evenings, the, sorry, my dad who's here this evening for sowing the seed of a dream. This dream was to earn a scholarship to come to the United States to run and study. Over the next couple of years, I did excel at my running and when I was 14, my mom entered me in my first track race. I enjoyed running on the track so much that when I was 15, I decided to move away from home and become a boarder at a school that offered track and field as a sport and where I could be coached by a great former runner. During my senior year of high school, my dreams started to become a reality when coaches at um, universities in the States started calling me and asking me to come and run for their schools. People often, often ask me how a girl from Cape Town, South Africa was discovered by coaches in the States. I owe a big thank you to my mom for that. My mom posted a YouTube video of me racing at the South African High School Nationals and always made sure my NCAA paperwork was in order. So thank you, mom. I was lucky enough to be offered a recruiting trip to a few schools back in February 2011. My parents sent me by myself as they said I needed to make this decision by myself and for myself. After visiting the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville, my decision seemed very easy and clear. Yes, the campus and the facilities were incredible, incomparable, but what really made the decision for me were the people. The staff, the coaches, the athletes, and the community were all so friendly and welcoming and seemed like they genuinely cared, which made me feel at home, millions of miles away from my home. I wanted to become a Razorback. Little did I know that I'd made one of the best decisions of my life, as well as met my future husband on that trip. In August 2011, I flew to the United States with two huge suitcases filled with clothes, because a girl can never have too many clothes, and a dream a dream which I plan to live out to the fullest. Over the past four and a half years, some amazing things have happened, but nothing happened overnight. I started at the bottom. At my first cross-country nationals, I finished 144th. I need to thank Coach Harder for believing in me from day one. Coach, thank you for not sending me home after that 144th place finish, <laughs> but rather helping me develop into the student athlete I am today. I can now proudly say that I've been a nine-time SEC champion, 10-time All-American, once played thir placed third nationally, three times been a runner-up nationally, and three times been a national champion while wearing the hog on my chest. Thank you to my now husband, Cameron Eford, who supported me from day one. 
Cam laughed at me when as a freshman, I told him I wanted to be a national champion and be a professional runner one day. Even though he thought my dreams were a bit too ambitious, he has always encouraged me to work hard, chase my dream, and reminded me that I have a talent and it's my job to make the most of it. Thank you to my parents and my sister, who without them I would not be here today. They are my number one supporters. They have been so unselfish throughout my college career. When it would have been easier for them to tell me to come home because we all missed each other, they told me to chase my dream. And a special thanks to my dad. Dad, thank you for traveling across the world as many times as you have to come and support me. Thank you to all of the Razorback staff who have continuously provided what I've needed to succeed. Whether it be tutors, sports psychology, or media support, I've always received more than I could have ever dreamed of. I'm so grateful for the opportunity I was given to compete for the Razorbacks. It has been a dream come true, as well as allowed me to set new dreams like running professionally. I've had more than a university support over the past four and a half years. I've had the support of a state. I've always felt the support as it has carried me through the tough times and led me to the great times. With a heavy heart, I'm approaching my last collegiate season. My goal for the season is to wear the hog on my chest with pride and enjoy every last moment as an Arkansas Razorback. Thank you so much for presenting me with this award. It really is an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for all of our honorees tonight. What else can I say? Amazing. A wonderful evening. We've honored nine outstanding student athletes. Congratulations also, and thank you again to our sponsors. Thank you to the Razorback Foundation, Razorback Athletic staff, uh, to all the volunteers who help. Congratulations to Jeff Long, by the way, getting into his high school uh, Hall of Fame. Couldn't be here tonight, but obviously thank you uh, to Vice Chancellor and Director Long. Uh, for being our fearless leader. Thank you to all the sponsors. And again, thank all of you for being here tonight. It means the world. So again, uh, we're going to close things out a little differently. I want everyone to get up out of your feet. You know what we got to do tonight. Stand up and let's call those hogs. Pig suey. Pig suey! Pig suey! Razorbacks! Thank you and good night, everybody.